Uh, let's change topics a little bit. Uh, Port Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, we're under construction now. You're building a bridge in the middle of the river. Um, some observers have noted that um, if you look at the cost of the project on an inflation-adjusted basis, it's about the same price tag as the West Side Line, but the West Side Line is something like twice as long. Uh, you, know, you came up through capital projects within TriMet. Why is this project so expensive on a, a cost per mile basis? Well, there's a, there's a couple of things that factor into that. Um, one is that the cost of this project also includes the financing cost. Uh, so it's an all-in cost, including the, the interim financing associated with the project, uh, so the construction period financing. That wasn't the case in the west side. And partially that's just an accounting difference that, um, that the um, federal government has instituted. Mm. I would say the other piece of it is that the federal government also now carefully reviews all the estimates and wants a very comfortable contingency on their, those, their projects. And so I think there is a very comfortable contingency. And um, it's much more comfortable contingency than I'm used to seeing when I was managing capital projects and at TriMet. That might mean that there will, will be some opportunity for, rein, for reinvestment along the project toward the end, but that will be up to FDA because they control that, uh, that dial right now. So if, if you come in with a unspent contingencies, what are some of the things on the wish list that that money could go to? Well, there is a, actually a deferral list associated with the project. Part of it is um, some of the pedestrian overcrossings over the UP line in the southeast Portland area, uh, additional capacity of park and ride, particularly at the Tacoma station, um, and a few other uh, uh, accoutrements along for stations and um, other things along the line. And I don't have the, the full list in my brain, but those are the biggest ones. Um, and there are other kinds of investments that we always like to make with our projects, including uh, assisting transit-oriented development to occur around station sites so that we actually begin to build the neighborhoods that we want to uh -huh. see around our stations and begin to seed that development in the right way. So there's some hope, but again, very early in all of that. Right. The other factor about this project I just wanted to note that is different than some of the others is the, the fact that it really needs to carve its own right-of-way out of southeast. Portland, and so that meant a lot more property acquisition than really any project we've had uh, since the west side. So that's the upside if we have some contingencies left over. Uh, let's talk about the downside. There's some uh, interesting ballot measure activity going on in Clackamas County right now. Um, is the, the Portland-Milwaukee funding secure, and are there any conditions under which you might consider terminating it at the MOS and dropping the Park Avenue station from the project? The funding is secure. Uh, we have signed contracts with all of the governments um, along the line, uh, starting with Portland all the way down through Milwaukee and Clackamas County. Um, and those agreements were agreed to um, by all the partners. Um, th the other thing I'd say is that the, the federal government, when they approve and consider these projects, are considering the thing as a whole. So they're considering a project that starts at Portland State University at the Transit Mall, and they're uh, ends in Oak Grove, um, and that's the project they evaluated, and that's the project that they agreed to fund at the level that they have, at about $745 million of discretionary federal funds coming to Portland with this project. So um, my view is that it is secure, and um, we have the strong, strong support of the federal government, the Federal Transit Administration, in moving this project forward. We've been very honest with them about these issues. In Clackamas County and Milwaukee, they both those bodies have voted twice mm -hmm. uh, for the project, for the local preferred alternative, as well as for the funding agreement. So, if there were some circumstance under which you had to consider the minimum operable segment, you'd have to go negotiate with the FTA to be able to do that. Is that what you're saying? If there were that mm -hmm. circumstance ahead of us, and I'm not anticipating that. Okay. We've talked about the potential of some contingency funds being available at the end of the project. Uh, one of the ways we're funding Portland to Milwaukee is. Uh, issuing bonds against future revenue, which means revenue that could be used for operations otherwise. Is there any consideration uh, that if we uh, do have contingencies left, we could reduce the level of bonding in order to preserve future operating capacity? Um, probably not. Um, the FTA does require that the scope of the project be defined in the full funding grant so that um, the use of any funds really is contingent upon FTA approval, so they would have to um, look at that themselves. And so at the end of the day, we'd be petitioning to uh, Portland, to the, the federal government to perhaps 
suggest a, an improvement of, of one or another in the project, but it would be specifically related to the project, and that's the nature of those discretionary capital dollars from the FTA. Um, just to note on those, those funds, up to now, we have not uh, put any TriMet money into the, full, uh, into the Portland, Milwaukee agree, uh, project. Uh, the funds have been partnership funds from the state of Oregon and some grant funds that were available to us from the MTIP uh, funds that, that Metro allocates. Uh, so even if you look at the difficult time that uh -huh. we've gone through from a budget standpoint, Portland, Milwaukee has not contributed to that at all up to now. And now the, first, the, future, the first payments on the bonds will hit in what budget year? I think they actually will hit in fiscal 13, the way we, we have it right now. Um, and so one of the other things I would just note about TriMet and capital bonding is that we have a very low uh, debt ratio associated with the, the, the agency. The board has a, adopted a debt policy that limits our overall debt to about 7.5% 7 7 of our overall payroll tax, so if you think about that as a homeowner budget, you know, that's a pretty low debt ratio, and if you compare us to other transit districts around um, the, the U.S., you'd find that that's a pretty low ratio. Now, that's intended because um, we, with all of our partners, recognize that it's incredibly important to preserve as much operating dollars out of the TriMet uh, payroll tax as possible. So it's only um, a little bit of leverage from the capital side that we ask for from TriMet, and then we look for partnership funds to do the balance, and that's quite intentional. Um, and if you look at the history of projects that we've done all the way from the Banfield uh, through, you'll find, first of all, that the federal government has contrib contributed about 60% historically mm -hmm. of those funds, as much as 83 or 82 on the Banfield, 80% uh, on interstate. Uh, to 50% here, but then other partners have contributed the balance. Okay. 